dear diary, I was super confident heading into the three games off the back of our wins against Chelsea and Manchester United, so of course we got a few injuries during that spell to throw the cat amongst the bluebirds. Before we took on Brentford, Alejo Valise twisted his ankle, which meant Marco Brun, who hadn't scored a goal for 16 matches, had to start. And finally... He ended his drought, picking up a double in a 2-0 win. Then a bit more seriously, Francisco Mexedo, who is in the Player of the Year discussion, picked up knee tendonitis and is gone for the rest of the season. Step up Carl Jakob Hein, who maybe might get enough game time to renew his work permit to keep a clean sheet at Leicester, but unfortunately we didn't fire and it ended nil all. Then we took on bottom place Stoke and had to come from behind twice against 10 men and also Hein had to save a penalty but come away with a tall draw. So we aren't losing, but would have liked more out of the Stoke game in particular. That leaves us in fifth on the table heading into our last four matches, the next two being tough against champions Liverpool and last year's winners Arsenal. Dropping points here is expected, but hopefully other results go our way and we can secure some form of European football for next season. Until next time. Welcome to episode 76 of FMOE here on Sean Does FM with Cardiff City. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we play two of our last four games in this Premier League season. They are two tough ones as well. First up, a trip to Anfield to take on the newly crowned champions as we take on Liverpool. And off the back of that, we host Arsenal who are just above us on the table at the moment inside a Champions League spot. So if you are looking forward to today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated but hopefully that intro ran you guys through what has happened off the back of yesterday's episode where we took on both Chelsea and Manchester United with a new tactical style here at Cardiff City. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner, as mentioned in that intro, went into those games with a ton of confidence. Four straight wins since we did switch from control position to Tiki Tucker, including those ones. In both those games in yesterday's episode, it started off well with a 2-0 win over Brentford, despite the fact that we had to bring in Marco Bloom when we weren't really going to because Valleys was in good form, but unfortunately... He picked up an injury, but thankfully, with this new style, he's found some goal-scoring form Then a little bit disappointing away at Leicester, and especially so at Stoke, but thankfully, we actually picked up a point from that game, because for a while, even though we did play against 10 men, it did look like we might get nothing out of that one, disappointing as they are currently bottom of the table, and look quite certain to be relegated off the back of just missing out on a European spot, Stoke City a heck of a come down for them but at least we haven't lost and we are scoring goals still playing some fairly entertaining football which is a lot better than what we could say for what was happening before with both the vertical tiki tacker and the control position styles and it does mean going to these last four games of the season we are pretty close to being on the brink to securing a spot in Europe for next season of course with Liverpool having won the Carabao Cup already as well as the Premier League and now they will be guaranteed Champions League football as well it should mean that seventh spot will also make their way into Europe so it does mean we are seven points clear of West Ham who are currently outside looking and albeit they could also sneak into Europe if one of those teams inside the top seven wins the FA Cup as well and it does look like it will be a final between Premier League teams this season so there's a decent chance that that will happen but hopefully with that seven point gap we at least will go into those last two games of the season with a buffer over West Ham. And our last two games are against Norwich in 19th and Watford in 16th. So you'd like to think those are games, if we continue our form, that we can pick up some big points from, albeit that gap could close today as we take on both Liverpool, the current champions now, and last year's winners in Arsenal. We have to do so with a few injuries as well, some quite serious ones, obviously, as mentioned before, Alejo Valise. He was out with a twisted ankle, 
nearly back from that, but won't be able to feature on the bench for this first game of today's episode, and might also be a bit of a risk in the second one as well, as it is a three-day gap in between this trip to Anfield and that clash with Arsenal. Also, Francisco Mexedo has been in conversation in the inbox items that we do get for the player of the season for the Premier League this year. He suffered knee tendonitis right before that Leicester game. He is out pretty much for the rest of the season, so it does mean that Carl Jakob Hein comes into the first team, as mentioned in that intro. Maybe it could work out well for us because he might get enough game time and points so he can actually renew his work permits. We might actually be able to try and keep him around for next season. Otherwise, we are going to have to look to buy a new backup goalkeeper. But so far, Carl Jakob Heim not doing a bad job. Certainly helped us out in that Stoke game where he did save a penalty. Otherwise, that might have been a different result, albeit they did score from the corner, which did come from that penalty save, but still doing a decent job in goal is Cal Jakob Heim, but that is the notable change to this team since you were last year, obviously a player who hasn't got a lot of game time this year, only being our cup goalkeeper, and we didn't go on much of a run in either of those competitions, and also of course, Marco Brun back in goal scoring touch, so hopefully he can keep that up to make sure that we do continue to put the goals away, but first up today, we do take on the new champions of the Premier League in Liverpool. They were crowned that off the back of a 7-2 win over Crystal Palace. And before then, they beat Stoke City by four goals to nil. So as long as they're not too hungover from the party, this could be quite a dangerous matchup. And especially because they don't really have much to play for now. They bottled a 3-1 lead in the second leg of a Champions League quarterfinal. And they got knocked out by Bayern Munich. So I suppose it could work out well for us that they don't have much to play for, but also they might want to really finish this season strong and win this title by a big margin, but hopefully it is the former and not the latter. And off the back of that, we take on Arsenal last season's champions and they find themselves in an interesting patch of form to get beaten by Manchester United in the FA Cup semi-final. I do think that final is actually a Manchester derby. So based on league position, if we want as many teams getting into Europe from the top end of the table, we do want City to win that yet again. Of course, they lost that one last year to Everton, which did mean that we did miss out on European football. But Arsenal just plugging away just above us on the Premier League table. Hopefully, we might be able to get a result against those guys at home and sneak above them into one of those Champions League spots, albeit going to be difficult. I think the main aim for us is just to make sure that we do find some form of European football for next season here at Cardiff City, but we'll come back shortly and get into the first game of today's episode. They're both going to be tough ones, but first up, we take on the champions, Liverpool from Anfield. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. There are Liverpool. I can tell you they have made a lot of rotation off the back of that run over Crystal Palace, so maybe they did get on the booze a bit. In terms of us, Quisada is actually suspended for both games in today's episode, so Davis and Savino steps in for him also. Ertank and Vayam may now be our first choice centre-back partnership. Mark McGuinness against Stoke, we found out, was just way too slow for that much higher defensive line. And that means that Nia Kate on the bench as well. So Mark McGuinness may be a player we need to get rid of in the off-season. But we get things underway here at Anfield and hopefully can pull off a bit of an upset result. And the first highlight here does happen just shy of the 10 minute mark. We have a throw, but unfortunately can't find Marco Brun trying to play that one forward. And Liverpool here do get a chance to do something down the left hand side, but good work there from Jovic. And now Ben Hardy will play this one back to El Bloshi. Hopefully still flourishes there with Savino by his side today. And Bayham, nice ball over there for Goran Jovic and does get him behind the defense there. Makes his way inside the box, does fairly well there to hold on to the ball, Savino to El Bloshi, will unleash one into the bottom left corner, what a goal to start off here at Anfield, and early on, we lead Liverpool by a scoreline of one goal to nil, and El Bloshi, oh he is oh so good, that is an absolute ripper from outside the box, but we might have blown that with that back pass briefly, but that is a thunderbolt, it gets past Kalaha, and we take an early 1-0 lead. And about halfway through this first half, we get the next highlight as a free kick to Liverpool, which Ben Doak takes, but thankfully we do head that one away. And Ennis Sully here might get a chance to do something for us 
on the counter attack, but we play that one back to our defense. You notice there that Bayham has picked up an early yellow card. So might be a player we do take off at half time, but we eventually find Ben Hardy on that right hand side who did have a hand in that first goal. Jovic there with an interesting touch. We do keep possession, but unfortunately, a bit of aerial ping pong in Liverpool here might get a chance on the counter attack. It's Curtis Jones here making his way down that left hand side, plays that one in for Wagstaff, and now Espria. With a chance, that one comes rocketing off of the post. That was a decent chance there for Liverpool to grab an equaliser, but still, they do have the ball. But Sully does some good work there to win that ball back. Now, Goodmanson will loop one forward, albeit Marco Brun can't win that in the air. And Timber picks out Curtis Jones, another very good chance. And Carl Jacob Hine comes up with a big save. So a few good chances there for Liverpool in amongst that highlight, getting closer to the half hour mark and they have a corner and thankfully Carl Jacob Hine will come out and claim that and we are still 1-0 up. And very late into this first half we do have one more highlight in it and it is Liverpool here trying to do something as they start to make their way into our half. Pazella down this left hand side just does there. I imagine that's Ben Hardy now it's Jones inside the box. We're actually defending quite nicely here. It's Wagstaff eventually who does get a shot off. That one goes over the bar and hopefully it means we will go into half time with that 1 0 lead. Both teams a little bit wasteful with their chances in front of goal, but thankfully, our one shot on target was an absolute beauty to Khalid Al Bloshi, and it does mean we take a 1 0 lead into the sheds here at Anfield. As I mentioned, we are going to make one change here at half time. Ola Viam, yellow card 6.4, probably a good idea to take him off, and Musa Niakate is on the bench, as I said. Bit quicker than McGuinness, and we found out in that Stoke game, he just might not be quick enough for this much higher defensive line. So we'll make that change and hopefully continue to hold this lead and take some unexpected points from Anfield. And very shortly into the second half, it is Liverpool here who are on the attack. Curtis Jones gets this ball inside the box, plays that one back to Pizzella, back to Timber, plays that one for Goodmanson, nearly stops that Jude there with a decent chance, but yet again. It hits the Woodworks Liverpool now, denied a few times by the post, and we are still 1-0 up, albeit a few minutes later, down the other end, we have a throw-in, and Goodmanson is on the ball. The goal scorer, Al Bloshi, plays that one in to Savino, just knocking about here dangerously on the edge of the box. Goodmanson picks out Fulius, will beat Callagher. I'm pretty sure he's onside if that's what we're waiting for, and I think we might have just taken an early 2-0 lead in the second half here at Anfield, and indeed the goal has been awarded, it did look like he was well onside, and now we should be taking points out of this game, with that two goal buffer, some good patient play there, Goodmanson with the assist, Farias drifting in nicely inside that box, tucks it away to give us that 2-0 lead. And up to the hour mark, we're going to make our first changes from the bench in this one, of course at the moment we are in a little bit of a busy period, so a good idea to take these players off as soon as they do go down. Two red hearts, Stovall can come on for Goodmanson. And also Davison Savino did pick up a little bit of an injury potentially. We do have both Barr and Jashari on the bench. And to be fair, Jashari, a lot better rated in that ball winning midfield role. So those will be our changes with a half hour left, still 2 0 up. And only five minutes off the back of those previous substitutions, we might make some more here because Ben Hardy has picked up a yellow card. Don't want to risk things. So Ian Hughes will come on for him and also the goal scorer in Al Bloshi down to a Red Hearts of Bar can also come on for him and Jashari can go into that DLP role for these last 25 minutes. And we've just entered the last 15 minutes of this game and yet again Liverpool here do have possession but so far they have not done too much threatening with it albeit it is Justin here who tries to put a ball there in the mixer. Harvey Elliott who so far in this save has caused us quite a few problems blazes that one wide and with 10 minutes left we are still 2-0 up. And we're into the last five minutes of this one. It does look like we are going to come away with something here from Anfield. Hopefully all three points. We have just started to try and time waste a little bit. But Liverpool here might have got a chance there to do something on the counter attack. But Marco Blun one on one with the keeper. But unfortunately hits that one straight at Callagher. Albeit these days not too worried. Because he is actually in some decent goal scoring form finally. After that 16 game drought that he did break at Brentford. But now we have a corner which of course Valius is going to take quite a bit of time over with our sometimes time wasting that we have had on 
since that five minutes to go. Before injury, timing is beaten there at the far post. Is Marco Brunfort the Jashari? Might have tried to unleash one. Eventually, it was Hayati Ertank. Probably should have been Jashari. And we now enter injury time. And with only a few seconds left in this one, another late corner this time, Marco Brun does win that one in the air. It goes over the bar and now Liverpool will try and get a late consolation goal in this one. But thankfully, looks like we played them at quite a good time right off the back of sealing the title. Does look like maybe they are on the end of year break a little bit early as they do just knock it about here in the latter stages in Beljo. Another player has been quite good against us so far in this save. Had the ball inside the box. Jule will unleash one, but thankfully it goes wide, albeit in a sully. Did get a touch on that, but this will be our first win over Liverpool. Just noticing there above my head, though, that Arsenal, with two late goals against Stoke, so it does mean we won't jump above those guys, but still, that is a very, very good result. Despite that, though, we do have to sit through Liverpool getting their trophy presentation here for the Premier League, but it will be a little bit of a somber one, you'd imagine, as they suffer a 2-0 defeat at Anfield to Cardiff City, and that was a good performance. Certainly Liverpool had their chances in that game to get things back to all square a few times, but we were a bit more clinical in front of goal, maybe having Kalaha there instead of Alisson did hurt them just a little bit, but Liverpool are the Premier League champions, we already knew that, but that is a big three points that should go towards us just being a bit more solid in a European spot for next season. We'll eventually wait and get into the stats from that game once the celebrations do end, which shouldn't be too far away off the back of the handstand there that we did just see, and we eventually get there in terms of the game. Quite even, the XG was a little bit higher, but that first half stunner to Al Bloshi did mean we just had that advantage for most of the game, and then early in the second half, Facundo Fadius put that one away. So a very good performance. We'll tell the players that, get through this post-match interview and see what that has done to the Premier League table. Actually, some quite good points there, of course, off the back of those draws against Leicester City and Stoke City in particular. And with Arsenal also winning, we are still below those guys, but Brighton have suffered a 2-0 defeat at West Ham and they're a team goal differential-wise. We should be able to stay above, so maybe Champions League football for next season is not out of the question, but West Ham now do keep pace with us as well, thanks to that win over Brighton, but still that is a very good result, and it does mean when we come back, it might be second versus third on the Premier League table, as we are going to host Arsenal, we'll come back shortly with the team sheets. And we are back a few days later for the second game of today's episode. Team sheets here are very easy. No players have recovered from those injuries just yet. So putting out exactly the same squad with Quisada still suspended. There are Arsenal playing a 4-4-2. And hopefully at home we can continue our good run of form. And maybe sneak above both Arsenal and Newcastle for now. Who have just snuck above us since that game against Liverpool. And it's taken seven minutes for the first highlight in this game. It's an early corner to Arsenal, but thankfully Carl Jacopine does come out to claim that. And this highlight will continue. The only thing of note so far is that Goodmanson has picked up an early yellow card, but hopefully that won't hurt us too much in this first half. Al Bloshi plays that one in for Savino, but a loose touch does mean that Arsenal can do something here. Brobby gets in behind, but Carl Jacopine coming up big for us early in this one at home. Keeps it nil all, albeit Arsenal will have a corner, so can still put some pressure on us here. Trinkau floats this one in, but thankfully we hit that one away, albeit yet again it will result in an Arsenal corner. So they're putting us under a lot of pressure early in this one. Trinkau goes near post, but this time Savino will hit that one away, and we keep it nil all, coming up to the 10 minute mark. And 20 minutes off the back of that opening highlight, our next one does start here in Arsenal are trying to play out from the back from a goal kick. Hopefully we can put some pressure on them and maybe get on the front foot here like we did against Liverpool. But this time at home, Urtank does win that one over Jesus. Nice ball there looking for Sally, but doesn't quite reach him. Good work there from Sanger, but good tackle there from Bayham. And now Jovic here can find some space with the ball down this right-hand side, plays that one back. To Al Bloshi now knocking it about. On the edge of the box, good chance there for Enesali. 
just blast that one wide and it is still no all stats wise certainly in the front foot in this game and yet another corner there for Arsenal Carl Jacob Hein will come out and claim it and this highlight is going to continue hopefully find someone here and yet again picks out Hayati as that right-sided center back Al Bloshi up to Savino this time able to keep the ball and yet again the ball does find him and Fadius now will pick out Ben Hardy on that right hand side just keeps it Al Bloshi finds Savino in the middle nice looking pass there but doesn't quite reach Ben Hardy Arsenal clear it Ertank near loose touch and Jesus nice ball out there for Trinkau does quite well to pick that out and keep the ball from Goodmanson now Zinchenko inside this final third back there for Kieran Turnier block shot Zinchenko heads that one it's a looped old shot but it beats Carl Jakob Hein and Arsenal at the half hour mark take a 1-0 lead here at Cardiff City Stadium hopefully we can come back from this albeit to be fair we've already picked up three points today which was a little bit more than I was expecting but that goal is a bit unlucky the shot from Tenny takes a deflection Zinchenko right place right time well lofted and gives Arsenal a 1-0 lead and with just over a minute left in this first half, there is one more highlight. Another yellow card for us this time it is Jovic. So he is also now easing off tackles. But Marco Blun does have the ball here. And hopefully we can do something in a Sully. One block shot makes his way inside the box and just puts that one wide. It will not be a corner. So must have been a decent connection there. And it does mean we go into half time. 1-0 down. Actually playing quite well. Just not put the ball in the back of the net yet, and as you saw just before, that Zinchenko goal, a little bit unfortunate, it's not going to panic too much, albeit might take off those two players who are on yellow cards here at halftime in Goodmanson, and in Jovic, some decent options on the bench to replace those two, in Stobble and Dominguez, those two can come on at halftime, and hopefully we can grab at the least an equaliser, in the second half we get it back underway, 1-0 down. And just over 10 minutes into the second half, we're going to make a few more substitutions today. Our Bloshi is actually not playing that well and is also on a yellow card. So Jashari can come on for him. And Urtank also on a 6.4. Nia Kate will come on as well with 35 minutes left. Still 1-0 down. And five minutes off the back of those substitutions, we do have the ball here inside the final third. Savino in the midfield does lose out there to Trinkau. So he's now lost the ball a few times. Hopefully does not prove too costly. Gabriel Jesus... Finds Brobby, but thankfully that one goes straight into the arms of Hein. And with 20 minutes left in this one, I think it's time for us to make our last substitution. A few players out there are down to red hearts. I do think, though, in terms of bench options, the least drop-off is probably Ruben Colwell in place of Bakundo Falius. That will be our last substitution. We might also go just a little bit higher tempo and direct as well, albeit it is still shorter passing and lower tempo but not quite as low as the game does suggest and also a bit wider on attack as well. And hopefully that might help us grab an equaliser. Still 1-0 down with 20 left. And nearly five minutes off the back of that last substitution. It is a free kick here for Arsenal and Coop Miners is going to take it. We'll try and put this top right corner and that is a top save there from Carl Jacob Hein to be fair to him. Doing a good job in place of Mick Sato, but Arsenal will still have a corner. They put this far post and Bamba gets his head on the end of it. That's twice now that Tynes done some quite good work. But from subsequent corners especially, since bringing on Stovel at left back, we've been a bit vulnerable from those. And Arsenal make it 2-0 with only 15 minutes left. And this might be our first loss under the Tiki Taka style. But only a few minutes later, we are now down the other end for a corner of our own. We go near post for some reason, because we're not supposed to. But Nia Kate is there. And just like that, we get this back to a one goal deficit and hopefully can start to build some momentum and maybe get back in this one and take some points. That is a rocket header and Nia Kate's first competitive goal for Cardiff City to make it 2-1. And with just over five minutes left of regular time in this one, we have gone attacking. And there is a highlight here. Ben Hardy has the ball. Edge of the box. He picks out Ruben Colwell. Finds that bottom left corner. And just like that, we've grabbed an equalizer off the back of that. We'll drop back to a positive mindset. Still keep that slightly higher tempo and not quite as short passing style as obviously it is working. But this is some really good work late from us here. After looking like we might suffer a 2-0 defeat. We make it to all with only a few minutes left. 
And at the 88 minute mark, it is a free kick here to Arsenal. They pump that one way too deep and Carl Jacob Hine can deal with that. Hopefully doesn't do anything silly here from the subsequent clearance. He doesn't have too many options because he is supposed to distribute to his center back. So he pumps this deep, but Arsenal Tomiyasu wins it. Ina Sally finds Marco Blun, but does lose it. Now Calvert Lewin gets him behind, but for some reason flicks that one straight on yet again to Carl Jacob Hine. Only one minute left in this one. Arsenal again win it in the air, but this time Cole will tackle on him. But Inasali does have the ball outside the box. Takes on a shot. It's a rocket top right corner. And all of a sudden, we are free to up. And now we start to slow things down, play like we usually do. Go more disciplined. Go more narrow attacking wise. And just time waste that little bit. And also, we might just go over and slow the pace down from our goalkeeper as well. But this would be a big come from behind victory if we can hold on and with only injury time left, having scored three straight goals, you'd like to think we can. A few hitters going loose there from Arsenal. Slide tackle on Colwell. Inner Sally just finds that little bit of space. Rockets that one past Ramsdale. And we have come from 2-0 down with 15 minutes left to grab a 3-2 lead. We'll make those changes. There is going to be five minutes of added time. And there is a throw in here to Arsenal at the 91 minute mark. They try and do something down this left hand side. Tenny will find Zinchenko. Good work there though from Ben Hardy to get that ball back. And hopefully we can just hold on to it here. Savino will find Stobble here out on this left hand side. And hopefully we just take our time here and hold on to the ball. Good chance here for Inesali. That one does get blocked. It goes out for a corner. And hopefully we can just take our time here before we do put this one into the mixer. And Arsenal will have no time to try and respond. Only three minutes left in this one. Sally taking lots of time on this one. Hopefully again can pick out near Kate. That would also work quite well for a cushion goal this time. Goes far post to Minguez. For near Kate probably should have taken the shot. Instead passes it to Sally. He was offside. But hopefully that will be all she wrote. But with one minute left, Arsenal are on the attack here from what did look like a corner in our favour. Calvert-Lewin somehow plays that one back to Kieran Tierney. We don't quite close him down. Plays it back to Coop Miners. And Jesus there gets him behind Bayham. Was he offside? I hope so. Otherwise, it's not good work there from the former Newcastle man. And Arsenal have grabbed an equaliser. And indeed they have. That is a little bit softer. Thought we should have closed that one down. And Vayam was all over Jesus. Except for when it counted. Beats Carl Jacob Hine from a tight angle. So I suppose now we go back to our usual playing style. And also back to our attacking mentality. At least I say usual. Do what we were doing before we did grab that goal. Which did put us free to up. But maybe there won't be enough time to do anything more in this one. And I think that will be all she wrote. To be fair, pretty happy with a point from that game after being 2-0 down with 15 minutes left. But we were so close to grabbing all three points and jumping above Arsenal on the Premier League table. But unfortunately, they grab a deep injury time goal there off the back of Sully, making it 3-2 in the 90th minute. But still, a pretty good come from behind effort there to grab a point. And it does mean we get four points from today's episode, which is a lot more than I was expecting. But it could have been oh so much better. I've done pretty well to come back from that one. And hopefully that does mean we should still be in a Champions League spot on the Premier League table when all the teams do play on this match day. But that is a decent come from behind result. Free all at home against Arsenal. And we have gone for a day off the back of that free all draw of Arsenal, an absolute classic Premier League game. That, and there you can see on the right hand side, sort of there, the results from the rest of the games on that match day. Liverpool getting back and winning touch. West Ham did suffer a defeat, so it does mean now I think we are locked in for European football next season, of course, with seventh place being good enough, I think, with Liverpool having picked up the Carabao Cup. West Ham can only get 63 points. It should mean we have European football to look forward to for next season. And to be fair, Champions League might be a little bit tough for us. But it does look like at the moment it might be what we do end up with. 
because of course coming up at the start of next week, we are going to play our last two games of the Premier League season. Also, Aston Villa continue their winning ways with a win over Chelsea. Brighton, though, slipping up a little bit with that draw to Manchester United, thankfully, because it does mean that they stay below us. And also Newcastle right in that hunt to overtake us as well as Aston Villa. With those last two games in mind against both Norwich, who are down in 19th and Watford in 16th, You'd like to think on recent form, we should get close to maximum points from those ones. So hopefully we do stay inside that top four, get some nice juicy Champions League money and can use that in the transfer window at the end of this season. But that will do it for this week of FMOE. Certainly at the back end, switching to that ticky tacker style did help. And hopefully tomorrow as well, we might get some players back in particular, Alejo Valise which might just mean if Marco Blun is not firing, he can come on and bag some goals in those last two games of the season as well. But that will do it for today's episode. Two really good results there. A winner Anfield and a come from behind draw before throwing it away a little bit against Arsenal at home. If you enjoyed that one, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well as I said, we'll come back at the start of next week, taking on Norwich away. And then on the last day of the season, we host Watford. Like to think six points from those games. So we can enter the Champions League and then off the back of that, we'll have some transfer window business. I dare say we'll probably be looking for a striker because that has been a big letdown this season. I think we need a world-class one, especially with some European football. So that will be the main priority. But until the start of next week, we hopefully we can secure that Champions League football because I do think now we are guaranteed to be in Europe in some form. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.